Hey, hey you guys, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to get BigQuery data into Looker Studio the no-code way, or sort of the default way, the way that everyone will have access to. There are no limitations, no bar, no extra software, nothing else is needed in order to get this. So we're going to be comparing the Google Analytics 4 API to this new BigQuery, uh, not new, this old BigQuery method, and uh, compare and contrast and show you kind of how to get some actual data from this. So you might be saying, like, why do I need to, if, if the GA4 API and the BigQuery piece matches, why do I care? Why does it matter? Because just like any visualization tool, it's nice to get everything into one spot. So you don't have to be going and hunting in all these places. And then because it's using BigQuery, you'll avoid a lot of the limitations and things that the GA4 API has at scale. So as you start to get more sessions, you start to get more API hits, like all of these different things, your BigQuery is going to scale much better than the original, like the, the uh, default or what everyone typically goes to, which is the GA4 API connector. Um, so with that said, let's share my screen. I'm gonna delete some of these before we get going. And then what we're going to be doing, and just so you know, is teaching how to actually, uh, not necessarily this no code way, but um, how to make BigQuery and Looker Studio work together in a really nice way how to write queries that will uh, scale inside of Looker Studio that answer your questions without having to write a bazillion queries. So really we only write two or three queries and we just reuse those and we can answer 90% of all of our clients' questions. So we're gonna teach you all the tips, tricks, and things that are happening in what we call a sprint. So this is a BigQuery GA4 Looker Studio sprint. You can come and watch uh, JJ explain all about it here. Um, but this is a live hand-holding walk with you, do it together. At the end, you'll have a final result that is you can take away and use for yourself, your clients, whoever it is, and it will be better than anything out there because we've tried it all. So there you go. There's our plug. Head over to this exact URL, divisionlabs.notion.site, Q1 sprint. Just click the link in the bio. All right, let's dive in. So first up, what we're going to be doing is looking at the two different data sources that we will be using. So let's come up here, let's go to resources, manage added data uh, things. And one of them is the Google Analytics default connector. So that's just this one. You just click on that when you're adding your, your data source. So click on that and you're going to connect your, uh, your data source. So just as easy as that, I've already done it. So we're going to ignore that. The other one that we're going to be using is, uh, let me just remove it so we can re-add it, how's that? The other one is this add data source and you're gonna click directly on BigQuery. So we're gonna be connecting directly from Looker Studio to BigQuery, but when we choose our, um, our, let's see, which one is it? When we choose our actual data set, it will tell us which tables we wanna look at. So we're gonna be looking at this events underscore. The events intraday is if you're wanting to build this for real-time data, so like today and some of yesterday maybe. Uh, but where we wanna look at historical data, so we're gonna be looking at this top one, events underscore. And then there's this little box here that says Firebase template level. We're gonna click events. So this is gonna kind of pre-populate some fields for us that we are going to be using uh, in this video. So now we have our two data sources connected. We are connecting a Looker Studio directly to the GA4 via the GA4 connector using the GA4 API, and we're connecting directly to BigQuery from here using that Firebase events template that they call it. So uh, with that, let's start seeing if we can get some numbers and mix and match and uh, make this work. So I've already added just a day range, nothing too, nothing too crazy there. So let's begin by adding in a scorecard. So let's start by just seeing if we can get users from the GA4 um, connector here. So it's gonna default to views. Let's pull up users, just see how that happens. So total users, there we go, 518. Boom, nice, perfect. That is 518 according to GA4. And if we come and actually look inside of analytics, we can see that in that date range, we've got our total users column here, which is 518. So, so far, nothing crazy happening. We're starting to get our data into Looker Studio. Now let's do the same thing, but we're going to do it with um, we're going to do it with the BigQuery data. So now we're gonna come here, we're gonna change our data source and go to that one. And here, let's just type in users and see what we get. Unique users, let's click on that, see if it matches, 518. So there we go, now we have the same piece of data that is being accessed via both the GA4 API and through BigQuery and they match and it matches what's inside of the GA4 interface. So that is good, we can add on top of this uh, any charts and things like that that we want. So let's come here. 
Let's add a little chart. Our dimension uh, is going to be date, event date. And we can grab users. Um, so let's do that. Let's see, this is our BigQuery one. Let's show a summary row. So let's copy this, bring it over here, and select our GA4 API one. Date sessions. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's grab users again here. Is it active users? No, total users. Total users. All right, there we go. So um, you can see how like using them both, they're going to match pretty pretty much dead on when you're using some of these um, like built-in things. Um, yeah, so let's move on to some of the other ones because there are some nuances. So how do we get some of these other details like page views, item views, and leads? We're gonna go over those three quick examples uh, in order to, to do that. All right, so what we're gonna try and do is figure out how to get some of these other metrics in both of those. And it's a little more straightforward with the GA4 API one. In fact, what we can do is just come up here, copy this guy, come down, put it in its right little spot, and the metric we're gonna to change to be views. So views is going to be the page views uh, from uh, GA4. And we can come back over here, 1116, 1116. So how do we get a specific event name uh, an event count using the BigQuery sort of native, the native BigQuery connection. Because if we come here and we search for um, just any metric, we search for view, it doesn't come up. So there's not like a, there's not one for page view, uh, anything like that. So how do we do this? Well, what we do have is a dimension called event name. So we're going to use the event name uh, dimension here. And that's going to tell us right now a count distinct of all the different event names. So there's 26 different event names that it's detected. Well, that's not what we want. We want just the event. We want the event name. Uh, we want the we want the count of the event names where the event name is page view. And so that's the logic we're going to go for. Count of the event names where the event name is something specific. So uh, instead of event name here, we're actually going to use the metric of event count. So this will actually just as is will give us the total event count uh, that is happening uh, in this time frame, you know, with all these filters. So this time frame. Um, but what we want is actually to filter this and have an event count where the event name equals page view. So we're going to say, I include event name equals page underscore view, because that's the page, um, that's the event name we're going for. So our little syntax here is I, so include event name equals page view. And that tells us right in the filter name all of the different conditions here. So uh, include event name equals page view. So by doing this, we can actually have the um, count of events for any event name that happens inside of the BigQuery. Uh, so same situation for this. Let's just do it one more time. Uh, here we can actually change the uh, metric to be item view events. And over here, we're going to copy this and then we're going to have to remove this filter and add a new one for uh, view item. So include event name equals view underscore item. So include event name equals view item. View, come on, view item, item. So we'll go ahead and save. So now we should have our account from BigQuery for the view item event. Um, and then finally down here for leads, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so we're gonna search for lead. And we're gonna find that one here. So it says conversions generate lead. So generate lead is one of our conversion events. So there's not like the native, you know, uh, like lead thing, it has to be marked as a conversion. Uh, and then it'll come up with like all these user conversion rates and, and session conversion rate. But we just want the top one, like total count of uh, generate lead because that's a custom one for us. And then here, same sort of process is we're going to keep with our event count, but we're going to change the filter here. So we want a specific event. So include event name equals generate lead. 
include event name equals generate lead. Generate lead like that. And we should have a similar count. All right, so there you go. Um, that is kind of how you can use the BigQuery native connector inside of Looker Studio to replicate some of the functionality that the GA4 API connector has. Um, now, a few kind of pros and cons of each. One pro, I guess, of the BigQuery, there's various. One of the pros of the BigQuery connector is that it will also include the intraday stuff. So if you want to do more of a real-time report and get uh, data as it's happening up to whatever the, the refresh um, is. So if you go to manage added data sources, so if you were on the, um, let's say this is the intraday table, you'd want to come up here to data freshness and change that to be uh, like the lowest, right? So set it to be a one minute refresh so that it will continually update and you'll get actual, you know, real time data uh, instead of having to wait for the 20, uh, 48 to 72 hours for the API connector. Um, one minus, so downside of the uh, connector here is it doesn't have session data. So you won't be able to see like session source medium, that type of thing. And you won't be able to see uh, the landing page, which is a session uh, piece. So uh, while the GA4 API uh, connector here does contain that information, session source medium and the landing page, the BigQuery connector uh, will not. So if you want to get that stuff inside of BigQuery, Definitely check out our sprint coming up because we will be having the actual queries uh, to to grab that. So you can have full sessionized data for landing page, source medium, all of those different things using BigQuery. It's going to overcome all the challenges that uh, the GA4 API has. So any time delays, it's going to clean up UTM parameters. It's going to give us sessionized data. Lots of good stuff happening over there. So do go and check that out. And I hope to see you there.